Okay, I, w I would like to talk about the new album first of all, if you agree. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, in what way would you say that it is different from uh, the previous ones? I think because I I made it and after a time of, of kind of illness of uh, I went through a, quite a dark period for a couple of years of yeah. uh, depression and um, insomnia and it made many things in my life really clear to me coming out of that and I wanted to write specifically about about those those experiences that I'd had in a way uh, it's probably the, the most direct reflection of of my personality that I've that I've ever done um, that I've ever, ever created I think it's it's the, the least complicated maybe an album that I've done this is the only I can only really see it from from my perspective and, and what it means to me but it's I think it's the most personally meaning meaningful and honest record that, that I've done it, it's it was definitely from from the production side of things as well um, I tried to simplify everything and, and in a way go back to the essence of IMAX which is just one man one one computer one room um, and that's how I started the project and, and with this album I, I went back to, to that so it's it's a bit more electronic it's, it's back simpler to the roots. It's back to yeah back to back to the roots and um, <clears throat> So that's I think that's what makes it very different to the to the previous records. Um, mm -hmm. But I, in a way, it's it's much more um, much more honest than 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 anything else I've done. And and when you were uh, feeling bad, I mean, in your troubled times, uh, would you say that the love from your fans somehow contributed to to save you or to at least to to help you get out of the trouble? Yeah, very much so. Um, I mean, in in the worst period, I, I just I didn't go online. I didn't connect with any anything. I stopped making music, so I just became a recluse. I I, I went into a clinic and I was I had professional help, and so during that time, I I, I didn't even see friends. You know, it was it was a, a very isolated time. But one once I started to recover and I I became was coming to terms with with those issues. Um, I decided to to talk about it, and I, I wrote a, a long blog, a online blog about the experiences, and and it became very clear to me that, that there was so much support, and so many people could relate to those to those issues, that it gave me so much confidence to to go forward and 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 to continue being creative. Actually, because during that period, I I, I wasn't creative at all. Um, uh, I, I stopped I stopped making music because I felt like music was my enemy and, and that, that, that it was hurting me psychologically that, and emotionally. It was too much to, to deal with. Um, so once I realized that there was that, that huge amount of um, support and respect, uh, it really brought the confidence back for, for me to continue to do what, what I was doing. Um, obviously, I had to ask myself the question if I wanted to continue making music. And that took a while for me to, to, to rebuild my, my strength to know that the music wasn't hurting me actually it, it was it was it was nourishing me i had a lot of fear and and um and confusion during that time and um i'm thank i'm thankful to be to be better and stronger than i was and you also said in an interview that when you were not feeling good that you were listening to the music that you loved as a child yeah uh, which band or artists were you listening to well, there's a few different things. Um, I'm a big fan of um, David Sylvian. Um, oh, he was he was he was a big idol of mine, and, and uh, I'm a big fan of Philip Glass and Steve Reich and and, and, and sort of min minimalist music. So at that time, I was it's kind of weird music to be listening to as a child, but it, I was indoctrinated by. Uh, my my close uncle he kind of brainwashed me actually with with, with David Sylvian and and this weird this, this weird minimalist music so um, it really was very comforting and I hadn't listened to to those things for, for many years um, and I'd forgotten how I felt about other music um, I'd I'd been so concerned with with myself and my own music for so long that I'd lost touch with those things so in that time I I wanted to reconnect with that and. Actually, music for for a long time, other people's music was was quite threatening, and I was afraid to listen to 
to other things because I don't really know why. Um, but I wanted to to reestablish how I felt about other people's music, and, and that really helped me. Were well, you talking about uh, Brilliant Trees by David Sylvian, for instance, which is a wonderful uh, album? That is a wonderful album, um, and I, I had a much closer connection with Secrets of the Beehive, which was, uh -huh. I think, the one after that. Uh, do you remember uh, the, the first LP or the first single that you bought when you were young? Uh, I remember the first one that was bought for me. I think it was, um, I think it was Relax. And Frankie goes for, for, and Frankie goes to Hollywood. <laughs> um, that, that, I think that was that was bought for me by my sister or, uh, or something. And, and that, you know that, that that was quite quite crazy music if you think about it. For yeah, but for I see that, I that. see a link with what you've done afterwards. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's uh, <laughs> there's definitely something. You know, I, and actually, you asked me that question. I haven't thought about that for for so many years. Um, that I really used to love Frankie Goes to Hollywood. So thanks for reminding me. <laughs> which which person and which artist or which band um, was the real trigger for you to become a musician as a as a professional? It was just I, I don't know if there was one. I, I mean, I would use Sylvian as a as a definitely a, an inspiration to to uh, to not do commercial music. So uh, he gave me a lot of confidence to to stay outside of the, of the of of pop music watching someone like him over the years survive whilst continuing to do quite unusual unique music um that was a big inspiration for me um many artists over the years I, it's too many to list but actually who was a big had a big influence in my on my development as a, as a young producer for instance was um was flood who who he, he produced many records that i loved and i had a, a very early opportunity to, to to work with him we worked with him on, on the first uh, sneak of Pimps album and and that was that was a big uh had a big influence on, on my own music just just to see someone like that working and 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 to, to to see also the fact that that he 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 could do many many different things and that influenced me in in terms of becoming a producer becoming a solo artist and and being able to to do all of the things that you need to do to make a record um and actually performance for me uh came a little bit later um i was much more interested in production first and and the, the actual performance side of things came came later about uh, influences Picasso said that, that poor artists copy and real artists steal <laughs> <laughs> so do you steal a lot I think the difference is that when you steal you take something and you make it your own I see I see yes I get it um, I think good music it, it, whatever the genre anything good is a reflection of the uniqueness of the individual. So if you have, if you can take something and make it sound like you, um, then it, it was always going to be unique. That's the only unique thing that we have is the individual because every part of the music has been done. Every sound has been pretty much explored. Um, you know, you can, you can tweak it and, and, and make it slightly different, but the essence is, has been, has been done in, in the kind of genre, in, in the kind of music that we make. Um, so for me, exploring the individual is, is, is what makes it interesting. Um, if you've got nothing to say as, as an individual, then that will show in the music. You know, you could do the most basic rock and roll, but if you, if you have a, a, a unique message, then it will sound interesting. Uh -huh. I mean, when, when we listen to your music and when we watch you, you, we feel there are a lot of references, but the way you, you manage them, the way you digest them is unique and that the result is completely original in my opinion that's an amazing statement thank you so much i don't know what to say what about the shows um i saw them in san diego uh, you invited some people on the stage like in the beginning of your career <laughs> yeah um we had a meet and greet and there was a girl that that really really wanted to to dance with me on stage and she told me that earlier in the day um, right. and it was it was a small club so I figured this is if it's going to happen then this would be the opportunity 
this would be the place to do it. So wow. I, I invited her on stage and then then I, I guess I just got a bit excited and invited everybody on stage. Um, <laughs> and it was it was a lot of fun, you know, I, I and I, I haven't this is the first tour that I've done in, in a long time. So yeah. in a way, just just uh, just kind of feeling the, the playfulness and, and, and the fun was a really, really nice way to, to begin the tour. I don't know how often I'll be doing that, but it was definitely a nice, nice moment. If you want to do it tonight, then we, we will definitely uh, go on stage. Oh, wow. Okay. I will definitely take you up on that then. <laughs> talking, talking about the relationship you have with your fans, which is very, very strong and very emotional. Yeah. Um, I think you, you, the way you, you, you manage to, uh, to innovate, I mean, to be very innovative in the way of, of creating this relationship and sort of helping it to, to, to become some kind of way of, of, of living uh, for you in a, yeah. in a very independent way. Do you see a development for this in the future, uh, to go even, even further or? Yeah, it's, it, it's an interesting relationship because I, it's so rewarding. Um, it's a very pure communication. There's something very, very pure about. It. It's quite difficult to have that in in normal uh, relationships, in normal in normal life. Um, so it's I'm very privileged to to be to be in that position and and to be able to to connect with with so many people on that on that on such a. It's as um, nourishing for me as it is for anybody else. Um, and I, it's the only way that I, I can really make music. Uh, that's when I when I started um, making music with my first Sneakerpimps album, which was a, quite a commercial uh, success. And yeah. and I saw that world. Um, it was so empty for me. Um, I, I just I didn't get anything from it. And 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 that that led me slowly led me to, to, to IMX over the years to, to, to get to a point where I really wanted to connect with people. And um, I, I think, you know, I get a chance to do it with um, with the crowdfunding that, that that takes it to a different level where you can people can get uh, to see different sides of your personality. You can offer different products. You can, you know, for me, I give I give I give everything on, on, on stage. I mean, if I meet people, I also um, I I need to. I need to give too, but, but um, that's why I'm quite a private person most of the time because I, if I do meet someone, I, I want to give them everything, and um, it, I, I can't see another way apart from just having a huge or orgy with, with everybody <laughs> um, of, of getting any any deeper, you know. Um, yeah. You know, we, it's we're fort fortunate to to have a long relationship. With, with with very supportive fans so c coming up with pledge wasn't wasn't too difficult but but it's still it's still always difficult to directly say well look you know i think trans uh, trans transparency is always the best it's just you have to say i i can only do this if you give me money you know yeah. I, can, i can't continue doing this without without your support so that that's that that is the truth and and yeah. it's not it's not that that I think everybody knows that we we're not fame whores and we don't really we don't aspire to, to being rich and, and famous and all of those those vacuous empty things. That's not that interesting. We just want to survive. My last question is about Belgium. Yes. Do you have a special relationship with Belgium? Uh, I think we were probably one of the, the first countries to to support you in the beginning. I think. Yes, you were, and and I I owe very much to. To, to you guys and it's been it's been a beautiful journey I uh, it's so nice to come back and to, to be sitting here looking at the red wine on the table there um, <laughs> and <laughs> you know <laughs> imagining all, all, the, all the lovely faces I'm going to see tonight um, I, I love it I love coming back here um, it's nice to have had a break I mean I think it's good to to, to take some time off and, and to to look at the things that are important in your life and And this is definitely one of them. And Belgium's really helped me, helped me, helped my career, helped me to be confident with with my music. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Chris. You're very welcome. Have a great show. Thank you. Enjoy, and I'll, I'll see you then. Okay. Thank you, Chris. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye.